This is my third installment on my small tutorial series on building a basic helicopter in Blender. My project is in the exact same shape as it was when I left off in the last video. Um, today I think we'll tackle the tail fin. So let's move that to the center. And I'll bring that in have a closer look. I'm going to go over to the faces mode and just quickly extrude these two tail wings and perform a couple operations on them to make them look a little more aerodynamic. So I'll go into the top mode so we can see what's happening. I'll use E for extrude. Because I'm in faces, it's not going to give me any dialogue or ask any questions. It knows that I want to extrude the whole region. And type 1.8 as being my size and engage that. Then I'll go to a back view so I can have a better look at where I'm working on here. Select the other side, extrude it, and type in 1.8 and engage that. Oh, I've had a little mouse error here. And this is a good opportunity to show a little, I don't know if it's a bug or if you want to view it that way, but something just happened there that I discovered and it may be a little bit more than you might suspect happened. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this face and we're going to see what happens. Right now the way this is selected, and I'm going to move into vertices so it's more clear what's happened here. With what's selected, if I'm to erase these vertices, these four vertices, what I would expect to happen is for this face to disappear as well as all of the faces that are adjoining it. So this whole area I would expect would be erased by erasing these four vertices. In a normal situation that's what would happen. So I'm going to X key, erase the vertices. Well, look what happened. Only that one face disappeared. Well, why is that? The four vertices I just erased are still sitting there. The reason is that as soon as I pressed the extrude option, the E key, the extrusion created doubles of each of these vertices. And when I backed out of the operation, it didn't back out of the extrusion. It only backed out of moving the extrusion. And had I uh, simply went extrude a second time, typed in the text, things would have looked right. It would have looked just peachy and everything. But I would have created doubles. I would have double vertices sitting there. Now those aren't too hard to deal with, if you remember to deal with them. But they are an issue if... I was to do that over and over again, make that same mistake a lot. I'd have doubles all over my project and my vertices count would increase and the number of vertices is going to affect the way this this um, object handles in the video game. It's going to change how much RAM it uses and that's not a good thing for some invisible doubles that we may not have known we're actually there. So we'll call that an opportunity to just demonstrate what happened. This can also change the shape of of the part if we're to use something like a modifier. The exact way that it impacted, particularly using the smooth option, it would have impacted and actually deformed an area around one side of the helicopter because of the doubles and not deformed an area around this side. So it is something to be aware of that that can happen using the extrusion option in this software. I'm going to select both of the faces now and back off, look at it from a rear view and do a few things to help them look a little more aerodynamic. First off I'm going to grab them along Z and sweep them up a bit. 
Second thing I'm going to do while I'm in this view is size them and again along Z. And it's going to slim the two faces out a bit to give them a more of a aerodynamic look to them so they don't look so blocky. I don't want my helicopter to look like it's built out of two by fours or anything. Now I'm going to go to the top view, grab it again, and sweep the wings back a little further. I think that will look a little better. And while I'm in the top view, I'm also going to size them along X. I'm going to shrink it in a little bit and take away some more of the blocky appearance. It'll give a little bit of angular appearance to the tail fins. And I think that looks good. Um, I'm going to quickly cut out of the video and see where I'm at for time. It seems like I still have a few minutes left, so I will quickly do an operation for the bottom skids in the fuselage and try to get the engine's fuselage extruded as well. Or return to a side view, use the brush select tool, and select the area of the fuselage. As well, I'm going to select the area where I'm expecting to put my skids as well. The reason why I want to work on both areas at the same time is I've had a look and this area for the engine fuselage is too slim. It's just not going to look right at all. And I'm thinking that my landing gear area, my skids, is having the same problem. This base is just too slim and it's at the same time as being a really fine base for for the landing gear, it's making these two areas on either side too fat and they're not going to look right when I extrude skids down from those four faces. They're going to be way too fat and way too blocky. So I'm going to increase the size of them both at the same time and on the bottom I may want to increase those a little bit extra. So I'm going to go size along X. Oh. Oh, it would be sizing along Y, sorry, and increase how wide those are slightly. I think that should do. There's always room for going back and changing the size of things, so I'm going to call that good enough for now. I'm going to go back into wireframe, quickly deselect the bottom using the brush tool and the middle mouse button, extrude the region of the engine fuselage. I'm going to go a little bit slim on that compared to the image. So it's already going to come across quite blocky with as many vertices as I'm using. It's tempting some real blockiness on this. Now I'm going to grab it. Limit Y by pressing Shift Y. That will make it so I only move along X and Z and try to place these vertices where they'll probably look more aerodynamic. Let me try that again. I'm going to go a little bit inside of the line and see how that works. And I'll do the same on this side. Grab it, shift Y, limit Y. Bring it slightly inside of the line. This one, I want to watch the angle a bit and try to match it up with the angle of this. Even though I'm not really likely to use that angle, I find that it confuses issues in the game engine. I haven't quite gotten the game engine figured out as much as I would like to. Now I'll brush select the four corners and size them in along Y just to give them a little more aerodynamic look to them. I'll make them little more of an angle compared to the bottom which we made wider. We're going to want this swept in a little bit so that it looks right. Okay, I'm thinking that I'm out of time now. So, in my next video we'll tackle the bottom skids and well there's actually a bit of work on the bottom skids to make them look good so that'll probably be all we'll get done in the next video.